Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today I want to do a quick video, maybe to try and help you if you're looking to buy your first drone, or your second drone, or your third drone, what's the best thing to buy. So I'm not going to literally tell you which models to buy, I'm just going to go through the different things you can get. So if you're starting off, and you've never flown a drone before, I don't recommend getting a camera drone, I don't recommend getting, if you want to spend under 30, 40 quid, you want something like this. This is the Asheen E12, I think this one is. Um, this is the 12HW, so this does have a camera on it, but you can buy the version minus the camera. I'd recommend buying it minus the camera. The camera on these things is invariably rubbish. You still need to hook it up to a smartphone to use it, and the video footage isn't going to be great to get out of it. You need to learn to fly the drone first, or the quad in this case. And this is a really nice one to fly. There's loads of different ones about. I'm not saying buy this one. I'm saying this is what you should be looking at. Spending under 20 quid for something like this. And that would be a great starting point for you to get into the hobby, to learn the controls, to learn throttle management and all the rest of the things. These are a really nice little toy to learn on. And this, they fly absolutely superb, most of these. I haven't really had a really bad one, small drill. So after you've done that, you'll then decide you might want to step up. You might want to step up to a camera drone, but not an expensive camera drone, but you might want GPS. The market's saturated with cheap, brushed GPS drones. They're all over the place. Everybody's copying everybody else. There's so many about, it's very difficult to choose. What I'd recommend you do is, before you've decided on anything, if you see the drone you like the look of, Go watch some YouTube videos, not necessarily mine, anybody's. Go watch some YouTube videos and don't watch one, watch two or three. And never ever, and this applies to every drone, watch the manufacturer's promotional video because they'll make something like this look like a Mavic Pro because that's what they do. But they don't, they're never going to fly that well, they're never going to have a camera that good. So always watch some reviews and try and get a broad spectrum because how do you know that the reviewer is telling you the truth out there? Unfortunately, sometimes they, they don't. That's just the way it goes. So make sure you get the drone that suits you by watching as much videos, reading as much as you can about it. So this is something that you can pick up for about 80, 90 quid and this is a brushed GPS drone. drone. So it's got brushed motors that are invariably geared. It has GPS and it probably has going to have follow me mode and all the rest of it. And you can pick one of these type of things up for about 80, 90 quid. Probably less if you want a cheaper version, you can pick one up for 55 quid, a GPS drone. But bearing in mind, the camera on these things is never going to look amazing. The stability is going to be affected in wind because of the motors, and the motors can wear out. Having said that, I've never had a brush motor wear out on me yet. So, take that in any way that people say they're going to wear out. I've never experienced that, but they're certainly nowhere near as stable in the air. And there's certainly not as much power. And the cameras, like I say, are invariably poor. You can then step up a little bit more and spend like maybe 120, 130 quid and get a brushed version. This is the SGRC F11. If you watch my channel, you probably know that I think this is the best sort of toy grade if you like drone on the market. Flies superbly well. The camera's not brilliant, but it's average. But the drone flies impeccably well. It has a 23, 24 minute flight time. You can fly it in wind. Its GPS lock is great. It's a great drone. Again, I'm not recommending buying this drone, but you could do worse. So, this is the next step up, and that's maybe that's the next thing you want to go for. Now, after you've decided which way you want to go, you might decide, well, I enjoyed flying this around, but I want something much, much quicker, and I'd like to fly FPV like the other channel, like the thing on YouTube and stuff. Well, then you'd need to buy something that's got a camera built into the front of it, so you can have it with some goggles, and they run on 5.8 gigahertz. So not the 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which is a really confusing bit. These ones on 5.8 gigahertz. It's an analog signal. This is not digital. So you have to wear goggles or a monitor so you can see this video and you fly around by this. What you get with this and the massive advantage of a 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi is virtually zero latency. So what you see is what you get. As it's moving, you've got time to turn because you've not got no latency. So if you're coming towards a tree, you really will be there. If you're flying it with Wi-Fi, FPV, you're probably going to hit the tree. It's as simple as that. 
so you need something like that. But when you buy something like this, this is where you cost that right, so you've got 60, 70 quid for one of these type of things, then you need to buy a transmitter. This is just a transmitter had lying on the shelf. So this isn't the transmitter you'd need to buy, but you'd need to buy a transmitter that binds to different different quads, because these will come in various varieties and you're gonna need a transmitter to bind them to. Again, this is all cost related and the cost going up and up and up. And that's what happened, unfortunately, with these type of things. You're probably looking at, to get into this type of thing, if you buy some goggles, you're probably best part looking at at least 150 quid to get something, something like decent, two or 300 if you want to get something better. So if that's the way you want to go, that's what you're going to have to do. But again, watch as much video, get as much information as you can. We're in a great position at the minute that YouTube's full of all this information. You can get anything to by searching on Google, so use what you've got. But then you might, then if you want to take the next step up, you might want a camera drone. So this is the Hubson Zeno. I have absolutely hammered this thing on my channel. I've got loads of videos on it. I didn't like it at first. I think they've actually made it quite a nice drone now with what they've done to it for the 4K camera. At the minute you can pick this up for 200 quid, believe it or not, with just a single battery. Um, if you shop around for it, or you can buy it for 260 with two batteries and a nice case. This thing is not a DJI-esque type of thing, but it's a cheap way to get into camera drones. If you don't want to spend the kind of money. If you move up from this bracket, then it's a whole different ball game and something I'm not going to really discuss on this video, because then we're into different things. DJI, Autel, Parrot, which is better, which has got the better apps. And, and that's not really what I talk about. But the one, another major thing you need to be mindful of if you want to get into these type of drones, so this one and this one, this drone here, this drone here, and virtually everything that's sold now works on 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Not to be confused with the 5.8 gigahertz. This, the 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi is a digital signal. It comes back from the drone to your phone. These are app control drones. To use the features, you're gonna to have to have a phone. And it has to work on 5.8 gigahertz. And I think it's AC it needs to be. But even that won't guarantee it because it depends what country it's manufactured in. So the only thing you can do is there's an app you can get for your phone which will tell you if your phone is 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi capable or 5G as they call it. But be very mindful that if you buy something like this, you won't, you need to have the phone to match it. Any iPhone from I think it's 5 upwards will work on it, will work on 5G. And most of the smartphone phones that's out there now but some of the Chinese brand phones do not have 5G Wi-Fi. If you're wondering what that is, this is because if you don't know what I've said with any of these drones you can end up with buyer's remorse. I have been there, uh, I haven't always been picked the right drone for me, I still don't, I still get it wrong quite often. But now I've used YouTube and everything else, I've got a better chance of buying something. Once, I've, Considering I've been reviewing, it's been different. So I've been reviewing drones that I might have known won't be going to be great. But certainly if I'm buying a drone for myself, like I bought the Mavic uh, Zoom, I never rushed into that place to wait a bit to be out while the bugs were running out because I knew that was the drone that I wanted for me. The fact that I've reviewed it on my channel doesn't mean that I just bought it for the channel. It's actually my drone. That, that will be used a lot. I bought this maybe two and a half years ago. This is called a Viho Movie X. So a company called Viho, V-E-H. They oh, made cameras. They used to make GoPro style cameras. They weren't as good as a GoPro, but they were cheaper, but not that much cheaper. Then they produced this drone. So this is a GPS drone. It comes with a quite nice controller. It has a camera that's a one axis camera, not stabilized, and it shoots in 1080p. I paid, I think, 300 and not a quid for it. I've flown it twice because it is that bad. I wouldn't even sell it and put it onto someone else. It is a horrible drone. Um, I keep thinking I want to cannibalize it because the camera is not that bad actually. It's not for a non stabilized camera, it's quite sharp. It's the fact the drone just doesn't fly well at all. Its GPS is appallingly bad on it. It's more to the right, I think. You can tell that straight away when you watch it hover. It's just disgusting. But I bought it and it's buyer's remorse because I bought this and thought, oh, I'll buy one of them because it looks great. That's the biggest mistake you can ever make. Don't buy a drone on what it looks like, buy a drone on what it flies like. And flying is what's most important on these cheaper drones. You, it needs to be how they fly. The camera isn't great, the best thing on this, but I'm recommending this all day long because it flies amazingly well. The, the issue with this used to be it didn't fly that well, but the camera was great. They've now got it quite decent all the way around. But like I said, it's not an expensive drone anymore. It's a cheaper drone. And the small drones, you're not taking the bigger. You could pay 20 quid and you don't like 
you don't like flying quads, you're never going to get into it. You've only spent 20 quid. Let's give it to someone else. But that's definitely the place to start. I, I would definitely start there. Uh, I started with something called a... In fact, let me just pause it and I'll show you what I started. Okay, this is what I learned to fly on. This is an Ares ESOS, I think it's QX75. It came with a controller that you could flick a little mechanical switch on on the front and it made one of the sticks up, one go down, so you could swap it mode two to mode one. When I bought this drone, I'd been flying RC helicopters and planes for a bit. And this is the first thing I got into a quadcopter because quadcopters weren't that popular at this point. I think there was this out and then after, soon after this came the QX350, I think I bought next from Blade QX350, absolutely horrible it was, so this is the original drone, as you can see it's quite battered, these are the original props on here and I bet you this had four or five hundred flights and been abused to death, but it was like 60 quid at the time I think, maybe 70 quid, by now it's a standard, this has nothing on it, there's no camera on here, it's got a three axis instead of a six axis gyro, it's got some lights that are really bad money <laughs> that are just like stuck on like an afterthought, but it flies well, and this is what I learned to fly on. And it was virtually indestructible. And if I'd have gone out and spent 300 quid on a drone and probably broke it the day after, I'd have been upset where this thing's made of like malleable plastic. Like. So that's what I, I learned to fly on. And it was a good introduction to drones. So you have to start somewhere. One thing I will tell you about this hobby is you're gonna crash. So before you get into stuff like this, make sure you're a bit competent because things go wrong. This was a King Kong QX95, it lasted three flights before I piled it in and took out the ESC and the main board. So, you're going to waste money at some point. So I hope this has been helpful. It's just a quick guide to show you how I'd set up and what I'd do. Everybody's got a different opinion of this and everybody might say go straight to a camera drone. And you can do it, you can go buy a DJI Spark and fly it tomorrow but you might have spent 400 quid on something you just don't really like doing. So, getting as cheap as possible. Thanks ever so much for watching. You have a fantastic day. Mm -hmm.